Gareth Evans is most well known for directing some of the best action sequences of the past decade, but today I want to talk about how he creates suspense. A lot of the time, horror movies will generate tension by withholding information. We know there's a threat, but not what it is. The frame is full of darkness, so we can't see the source of danger, or it just gets very quiet to prepare us for a big jump scare. <laughs> To be clear, none of these are bad, they can be very effective, but Evans does something else. He creates suspense with clarity and with pain. Despite being famous for rapid action set pieces, many of his most memorable scenes slow down and take the time to ratchet up the tension with a few simple ideas. First, he creates a sense of physicality. The suspense comes not from fear of the unknown, but by being hyper-specific about the danger. He often shoots close-ups of the weapons we're about to see being used against the characters, so we anticipate the violence to come, but then he'll sometimes cut away from the act itself, leaving us to imagine the feeling of taking a pickaxe to the skull, because these moments aren't about gore, even if they are pretty graphic, but that's not really the point. For all his violent excess, Evans places the emphasis of these scenes on how the characters feel, not on making us feel queasy. Let's take a look at a scene from The Raid. Here, police officers Rama and the injured Bowo are hiding from a gang of machete-wielding murderers, and a resident of the building hides them in a secret wall cavity. Evans shoots in handheld close-ups on their anguished faces, so we understand the uncomfortable tightness of this space. They barely fit in, so if they're discovered, they have no chance of escape. Once the machete gang enters the apartment, he establishes a clear power dynamic with this overhead shot. The killer is able to move, is in the light, and is taking up most of the frame, while the cops are stationary, in darkness, and confined to the bottom. All they can do is wait and hope they aren't discovered. To bring us into the headspace of the trapped characters, we go back to a close-up of Rama's worried face, then slowly pan across the wall, setting up when this happens. We have a clear view of the space, of the pending threats and its position between the police and their only escape. And just as we reach a climax, the killer is distracted, dragging out the encounter even further. Everything in this scene is reinforcing one thing, that the police are in mortal danger. Evans makes us afraid by keeping the focus on the fear of the characters, and by blocking the scene as clearly as possible so we understand exactly what the stakes are and the physical price of being discovered. And by making these moments moments of violence about character, Evans can use pain not for its own sake, but to tell the story. In his folk horror film Apostle, he expands on this as physical and emotional pain become intertwined and key character moments play out in scenes of physical brutality. This is a film about losing innocence and the burden of guilt, but how do you show that with scenes of violence? Well, here an innocent character, Jeremy, is about to be executed by Quinn in an attempt to forcefully take over the island. We begin with close-ups of the heathen's chair being put together, but the people constructing it are obscured with hats and masks. We don't get a good look at them, because this scene isn't about them. It's about the emotional cost of the pain about to be inflicted. The camera repeatedly shifts to Dutch angles, emphasising the irreversible effect of Quinn's grab for power. As he's turning the world on its head with an act of violence, Evans literally turns his camera upside down and we see from Jeremy's point of view as he's being dragged to his death and Evans uses these shots to get us into the same kind of panicked headspace as Jeremy, even showing the veins in his eyes bursting as his head is restrained in a vice. We are shown how this contraption works, but when it's actually being used, we move away from the detail, once again making us imagine what's happening, and focusing on the emotions and reactions of the characters who love Jeremy and are devastated by what is happening here. We only cut away from reaction shots and see the gory details, after the pain is over, because Jeremy can't feel anything anymore. By focusing on the feelings of his characters as they endure these horrible ordeals, Evans creates a sense of dread in us. 
people we like, people we're rooting for, people who have done nothing wrong, are placed in horrendous circumstances, and it's all the more impactful because rather than just showing us a grand guignol of gore, he chooses instead to show us the faces of these people so we empathise with their plight. If you want to build tension, all you need are clear stakes and something that really, really hurts.